Welcome to e-learning science. I'm Dr. Madasi, and uh, today uh, we have a lecture on genic balance theory. Since uh, in my last video tutorial we have discussed what are the various methods of sex determination. We have already discussed various methods of sex determination. The various methods uh, when we discussed all these methods among these methods we had a very important method which we call as chromosomal method chromosomal method of sex determination chromosomal method of sex determination those students uh, who have just clicked this video i request them to uh, please go to my previous video and see uh, what, what are the various methods of sex determination. Once you will understand that, uh, that, the, that video, then you can, you can uh, definitely, you can understand this one. This is because this is an extension of that uh, lecture. This is, this serves as an extension for that lecture. So we have genic balance theory. Genic balance theory, what it suggests, before understanding this genic balance theory, we must understand what chromosomal method of sex determination has said. As per the chromosomal method of sex determination, it will be the chromosomes like XX and XY. It will be the chromosomes, sex chromosomes like XX and XY because XX represents female and XY represents male. It is the chromosome, it is the chromosome which is determining the sex of any individual. For example, if any individual has XX chromosome, we call them as females. And if anyone has XY, we call them as males. That's quite understood. But here, what we are claiming, we are claiming that although we can understand there are some particular genes which are present on XY or which are present on XX chromosome and these genes are determining, these genes are determining the sex of individual. But ultimately, this is not the case. There was there were extensive experimentations, extensive experimentations were carried out by Wilson, Wilson and Bridges, Wilson and Bridges. It was the hard work of Wilson and Bridges. On they studied different organisms. They studied different organisms and what they observed, what was their observation? According to them, every individual, whether it is a male or a female, every individual has inherent capability for, for both maleness as well as femaleness. Try to understand what I mean to say. Every individual, for example, it is individual A, it is individual B. This individual is suppose male, this individual is suppose female. Every individual, whether A, male or whether B, female, has inherent capability, has inherent potentialities for, for developing into a male or a female. It means every person, every person has number of factors, has number of factors which are governing or which are coding for maleness and number of factors which are coding for femaleness. Every individual has inherent potentiality, inherent potentiality and definitely possesses those factors which govern the maleness as well as those factors which govern the femaleness. If we have individual A, this individual A we know it is a male and in the in this male there will be some factors there will be some factors and these factors maybe number of factors will be there which will be representing the maleness and there will be number of factors which will be resembling which will be 
uh, which will be determining the femaleness. But the question is, what is the sex of this A? The sex of this A is male. Male. It is a male. I will just put you in. The, I will just uh, try to explain uh, this thing in uh, in in some in some uh, uh, layman's language. I will tell you. For example, we have a balance. We have a balance, and I will put 50 gram weight on this side, and let me put 50 gram weight on this side. What will happen? There will be a complete balance. The balance will stick at the center. Therefore, this 50 gram weight on the left side and this 50 gram weight on the right side indicates, I will just, I will just correlate it with my topic. 50 gram weight here uh, is, 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 the, is basically governing the maleness. 50 gram weight here is basically governing the femaleness. This means 50 gram weight determines, are the male determining factors of an individual. And 50 gram weight here are basically femaleness determining factors in an individual. Or we can say 50% genes here, 50% factors are there which are controlled by genes and they have an inherent potentiality for femaleness. And 50% characters are there who they have inherent potentiality for maleness. And what will be the sex of this individual? Right now, nothing. For example, if we add a weight of 10 gram on left side, I will add up, I will add up a weight of 10 grams on left side. What will happen? The balance will shift towards the, it will incline towards the left. And we were, dis, we were discussing that these factors are basically pertaining to femaleness. And once we overweigh it, once we overweigh this side, or what happens, the balance has shifted towards the left and this is going to be a female. Although it has number of factors on the other side, on this side, it has number of factors which will try to make it male. But it has number of factors also which will try to make it female. But balance of, but the balance of genes has switched towards the left side, so therefore it is a female. Similarly, if we, if we will talk of male, every male, every male has inherent potential, has inherent potential for both maleness and femaleness because males also have number of factors, number of factors which are governed by the genes and these factors may be male determining factors and these factors may be female determining factors. But the balance has been shifted, uh, the balance has been shifted towards the maleness therefore such individual is is uh, by nature it is male because balance has been shifted towards the maleness uh, then uh, and we have mechanisms like xx and xy we have mechanisms xx is a female we know it xy is a male we know it here the shift of genes here the shift of genes which are gov which are governing the femaleness which are governing the femaleness here we will see the genes which will govern the femaleness are overweighted. And here the genes which are governing, which are present on the chromosomes and governing the maleness are overweighted. We have a we have a heavy weight of male genes, male determining factors in case of XY, and we have a heavy weight of female determining factors, female determining genes in case of XX. This was uh, basically uh, uh, this was basically uh, more experimentally proved by the bridges by bridges in Drosophila. This was proved by bridges in Drosophila. Drosophila. He suggested in case of Drosophila, we have X chromosomes, we have autosomes and we have Y chromosome. X chromosome, you understand what is X chromosome? Autosome, you know, those chromosomes who are not involved in determining the sex. And we have Y chromosome as well. Y chromosomes usually pertain to males. Y chromosomes are related to the males. What he said? He said, this X chromosome, this X chromosome has a has number of genes which basically tend to, which basically tend to incline towards the femaleness. 
or if this X chromosomes have number of genes, number of genes which try to switch the balance towards the femaleness. And we have this autosome A. This autosome also has number of genes, number of genes which will try to incline the balance towards the maleness, towards the maleness. This is something which is very strange because in our previous discussions, in our previous lecture, we discussed it is the mechanism like X and Y, which will determine, which will determine whether a sex is a male or is a female. But here in this case, we are not giving any importance to Y because Y is not determining neither maleness nor femaleness, but it is the X chromosome. It is the genes which are present on the X chromosomes. If they have a good number, good number of uh, genes, then we can say it will turn towards the femaleness. And if we have more autosomes, more genes, more genes, more autosomal chromosomes, they will tend their balance towards the maleness. In such a way, in such a way, for example, if we determine that, now how sex will be determined? Sex will be determined by the ratio of X by A, X by A. If X by A is 1, if the ratio of X chromosome divided by A chromosome is 1, it is a female. It is a female. If the X by A ratio is less, for example, 0 0.5, it is a male. And if the ratio of X by A is more than 1, more than 1, it is a if x by a is greater than 1 it is a super female super female because at 1 we had a female if it will increase increase means what we are increasing we are basically decreasing the x or increasing the a we are basically sorry increase means we are increasing the x and we are decreasing the a x by a is 1 here we say if the x by a is greater than 1 it means we are decreasing the denominator and we are increasing the numerator. X will be increasing. X will be more. X will be more. And we know if X is more, it will tend, it will tend the balance of genes towards the femaleness. So if X by A is greater than one, it is a super, it is a super female. And it is one, 0 0.5, more than one. And the last case, if X by A is less than 1, it means X by A is less than 1. It will happen when we have less number of X chromosomes and more number of A chromosomes. Or we have more autosomes and we have more X, we have less X chromosomes. Then it, uh, if the X by A is less than, sorry, 0 0.5, less than 0 0.5, it will be a super male it will be a super male because in the denominator side autosomal side the denominator side will be more as compared to the x and we know autosomes always represent in case of drosophila it represents it represents the maleness so therefore it will be a more male and a super male meta male and if x by a is between 0 0.5 0 0.5 was basically what a male to one and one was female if it is between 0 0.1 and 0 0.5 to 1 it is an intersex it is an intersex see we can understand uh, this thing by looking to this table here i have mentioned the x i told you x chromosome has genes which tend uh, which tend uh, which incline the organism towards the femaleness and we have autosomes Autosomes have genes which incline the development of individual towards the towards the maleness, right? And X by A, if the X by A ratio comes out to be 0 0.5, it is a male. If the X by A, A ratio comes out to be 1, it is a female. If it comes in between 0 0.5 and 1, it is an intersex. It has no sex. And if X by A is greater than 1, greater than 1, it is a super female. If X by A is less than 0 0.5, it is a super male. 
For example, we have triploid condition here. 3X. We have 3X chromosomes in Drosophila and we have 2 autosomes. In case a Drosophila possesses 3X and 2A, 3X chromosomes and 2 autosomes, the ratio comes out to be 3 by 2. It is 1.5, more than 1. It is a super female. And here, if it is 4X by 4A, 4, it is a tetraploid. Here also tetraploid. It is 4x by 4a, 4 by 4 is 1, it comes out to be, uh, this is a super female, this will be a female. And if it comes to be 3x and 3x, it is a triploid, triploid, and the ratio is 1, it is a triploid female. If it comes to be 2x and 2x, it is diploid, diploid what? Diploid female. If x is 1 and autosomes are 2 autosomes are double it is 1 by 2 it comes out to be 0 0.5 it is a male and similarly if it is 2 x and 3 a 2 by 3 is 0 0.67 it is between 0 0.5 and 1 therefore this is an intersex this is an intersex and if we have one x chromosome and three autosomes the ratio is 1 by 3, it comes out to be 0 0.33 and 0 0.33 is, uh, the, it come, is fa falls, falls between the range which comes from 0 0.5 to 1, therefore it is also, it is also an intersex, it is also intersex. This way, male determining factors and female determining factors have a type of balance and if the balance is shifting towards the x, it is a Yes, it is a female. And if the balance is shifting towards the A, it is a male. Then what is Y going to do? What is the function of Y chromosome? Y chromosome will Y chromosome is not going to determine the maleness or femaleness. Yes, Y chromosome determines whether the male is fertile or infertile. Presence of Y chromosome, presence of Y chromosome tells us the male is fertile. And absence of Y chromosome, for example, if we do not have Y chromosome, it may be a male, but the male is not sterile, but the male is not fertile, but it is going to be sterile. So Y chromosome will simply determine whether the male is fertile or infertile. That's all about this lecture. Hope you have understood the same. Thank you very much.